Sharp Short Stories. Seagulls Attack Rex. The following events were based on a true story. Names have been changed to protect the identities of the survivors. They had no remorse, no pity, no mercy. They saw what they wanted and they took it. They were thieves, plain and simple. They didn't care about the bakers, the staff, the customers. They didn't care about Greg or Greg's. All they cared about was food, even if that meant attacking children to get it. But what they didn't understand was that Greg, manager of Greg's in Liverpool One, Liverpool, had had enough. He'd had more than enough. He wasn't going to take it anymore. He was the only one brave enough to stand up to the seagulls. Because the Greg's Baker shop Greg worked in was so close to the Mersey River in Liverpool, it meant that every day armies of seagulls would band together and form coordinated attacks on takeaways and baker shops in the nearby area. McDonald's and Burger King were well-protected fortresses with huge heavy glass doors. If a seagull did manage to sneak into one of those fortresses, it would face a squadron of employees with an arsenal of brooms and mops to beat it into submission. Greg of Greg's had no such protection. It was such a small shop that they had to leave the doors open all day so people could queue up outside, and he only worked with a skeleton staff of three. Margaret, the cranky baker, Gary, the cocky 19-year-old who always made fun of him, and Lisa. Ah, the lovely Lisa. The seagulls were increasingly aggressive, fearless, and ambitious. The cold foods such as the chicken baguettes, tuna mayo sandwiches, and ham salad wraps were easy targets exposed in the fridges. The seagulls would walk right in, flap their wings to get high enough, grab a deliciously chilled snack in their beaks, and fly away to enjoy their savory snacks by the river. The hot food like the sausage rolls, bacon sandwiches, and cheese and onion pasties were safe behind the glass counter with a member of staff ready to shoo them away. But the people who bought the hot food like the sausage rolls, bacon sandwiches, and cheese and onion pasties were not safe from having their food viciously snatched as soon as they walked away. Children and babies were especially vulnerable. Greg was a serious man. He took his role of manager seriously. He got in early and made sure everything was ready for the day ahead. He left late, making sure everything was organized and spotless. He also took his only hobby, his only interest outside of work, very seriously. The ancient Chinese martial art of Kung Fu. Every night after work, when the other staff had gone and he checked everything in the shop, he'd get changed into his kung fu gear. Double layered foam shin guards, elasticated fabric arm guards, slip on sparring shoes, loose fit shiny black pants and sleeveless straight cut jacket with red toggle design. Every evening at 9.15 in the evening, he would walk to the nearby kung fu school and at 9.30, he and the other students would commence the evening's push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, skipping, punch bag, and sparring. On a hot summer's day in August, Greg's experienced the worst seagull attack in its history. Half of the chilled goods were stolen. Dozens of shaken customers ran back into the shop demanding another sausage roll or bacon sandwich because a seagull had swooped down and stolen theirs. Greg didn't have time to have one break in 10 hours, he was so busy, but generously allowed Margaret, the cranky baker, Gary, the cocky 19-year-old who always made fun of him, and Lisa, the lovely Lisa, to have every minute of their legally contracted breaks. And worst of all, the seagulls that left poop everywhere. That night, it got even worse for Greg. As he was walking to Kung Fu, he saw Lisa holding hands with another man. It felt like a knife in his heart. He'd always loved her, but never had the courage to ask her on a date. He made excuses to himself, like it would be unprofessional, or he was too busy as manager, 
where he had to focus on his kung fu. As he got closer, she saw him. He wanted to turn and run, but it was too late. She'd seen him. Not only was she with another man, but the other man was Gary. Gary, that two-bit lazy punk who had always made fun of him, despite being beneath his rank of manager. Not only was Lisa with another man, not only was it Gary, but Greg was dressed in his full kung fu costume. All right, Greg, lad, said Gary. Gary, Lisa, said Greg. I never knew you were in Cobra Kai, said Gary. Lisa laughed. The knife in his heart twisted. Cobra Kai is karate. I do kung fu, said Greg. Ah, oh, is it, yeah? Anyway, but that one's sound not. See you later, Bruce Lee, said Gary. Gary wanted to correct him, to tell him that Bruce Lee was actually the founder of Jeet Kune Do, a hybrid of martial arts, but they left by the time he remembered that fact. The following day was even hotter than the previous, and it was Saturday, the busiest day of the week. The shop would be overcrowded all day, or chocke, as people in Liverpool said. Greg had trained extra hard at Kung Fu. He was tired of Gary making fun of him. He was tired of not telling Lisa how he felt. He was tired of the seagulls. No more. Midday came and the queue to get into Greg's was halfway down the street. Shoppers were out in their thousands, all squeezing past each other. Teenagers laughed and took photos of themselves laughing. The seagull seemed to sense it was the perfect moment for an attack. Three of them flew into the shop and headed straight for the baguettes. Lisa screamed and Gary crouched down in terror. Margaret was on her break. This was Greg's moment. He leapt up onto the glass counter and punched the first seagull in his beak. It flew away in shock. He jumped down from the counter and kicked the second seagull in the wing. It waddled out of there as fast as it could. He looked at the third seagull who looked back at him. They looked into each other's eyes, seeing who would make the first move. The seagull must have had more sense than the other two as it turned and flew away from Greg's, Greg, and a kung fu beating. Greg had no time to congratulate himself. There were screams outside. He darted out and saw a seagull flapping its wings, suspended four feet up in the air, with his beak clamped down in a sausage roll. A four-year-old boy had his hands gripped around the other end of the sausage roll. There was a frenzied game of tug of war between the bird and the human, with both of them being pulled back and forth. Hundreds of people stood in shock, all filming the action on their phones with no one stepping in to help the boy. Even the boy's mother was too busy with Instagram Live to actually help her son. Only one man had the courage to step in. That man was Greg. He took two steps forward, launched himself into midair, spun round and performed a flying roundhouse kick to the seagull's body. It instantly released its grip on the sausage roll and fell to the ground. It looked up at Greg and realized it could never defeat this savory snack-selling kung fu master. It flew away shamed and embarrassed, realizing it was no match for Greg. The crowd cheered and clapped and pointed their phones at Greg. The four-year-old boy took a greedy bite of his seagull saliva sausage roll. Greg walked back inside the shop and saw the coward Gary still cowering. He looked at Lisa. Do you fancy a drink later? Said Lisa. Could do, said Greg. But only after Kung Fu. Glossary. Remorse. A feeling of guilt after doing something wrong. Greg's. A shop that sells hot food, for example, pies and sausage rolls. Vulnerable. In need of protection. Spotless. Very clean. Frenzied. Out of control. Comprehension questions. 1. What did the seagulls do to Greg's and its customers? 
2. What was Greg's main hobby outside of work? 3. How did Greg feel about Lisa? 4. How did Gary react when the seagulls attacked? 5. What did Greg do to stop the seagulls? Language and structure. A lot of military vocabulary is used to describe the seagulls. How does this make us picture the seagulls? 2. Look at this sentence. The seagulls were increasingly aggressive, fearless and ambitious. How is this triplet ironic? 3. The writer uses staccato sentences such as no more and that man was Greg. What effect does this create? 4. Look at this sentence. It flew away ashamed and embarrassed, realising it was no match for Greg. How is this sentence absurd? If you liked seagulls attack Greg's, read Bread, the story of Greg's.